Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing um, part two of the three part series found on Voldhub under Hackfest. Um, this one's called Senna. It's a second version of the last CTF I uploaded so check that one out. I'll put the link in the description. So we're going to start out by scanning um, our host and I knew it was 10.2.22 um, because I did this before but if it wasn't all you'd have to do is go to target and put a star at the end and you can run that as a quick scan so it doesn't take as long and then you'll be able to see all the hosts that are on your network and then once you figure out the one you want then I recommend doing an intense scan on it so before we look through this let's start a derb test derb http and this will find all the different files that are on the page and so as you can see that was quick. It found a lot, but so when we go back to here, um, the only port that's open is port 80, and it's running Apache HTTPD 2.47. Um, and then you can go to here, and you can see that it's actually running Drupal, which is a management, um, open source management framework. Um, it holds a lot of content, and so knowing that, um, you see the change log. Um, you automatically know that that's important because normally it does show the version that it's running and as you can see it also has a robots.txt so that's definitely something we want to check out so we'll go to the website and see what it looks like and see what they have on there so 10.0 there it is so when I got here the first thing I did was I uh, viewed the page source and sometimes there's flags hidden in here um, but I didn't find anything too important in here. So, going back here, then I tried a few like, admin, admin, like the last one. And it didn't work. None of the um, uh, common passages or anything worked. And before I wanted to brute force it, I wanted to look into it more and see if there's any other vulnerabilities. So, going back to here, let's check out the robots page. Robots.txt and so as you can see there's a lot of them so I personally went through a lot of them and a lot of them don't work or really aren't anything too important so watch if you go to here watch admin doesn't find anything even though the robot says it's there there's nothing there so that was kind of a pain in the butt to go through but then I came across the channel changelog I'm sorry so if we go back to here in the robots.txt on the derb, it kind of gives you all the same information. Um, if we wanted to run scans on any of the files that are found, we can, but we're not going to have to for this. So we can just close this. And so when you go back here, um, if we direct ourselves to the ch change log, I don't know why I keep saying channel. Uh, uh, we go here, we immediately see that it's running Drupal 7.3 so you can see all the past um, vulnerabilities that Drupal had and how they fixed them so when I saw this I immediately was like oh I know the version um, maybe there's a pre found exploit on it so if you go to Drupal 7.3 I believe it was yeah. exploit there's a lot of them on here, but um, the one I used was actually in Metasploit. And so we'll open up Metasploit here in a second and check out to see what they what they have on there. So let's open up Metasploit and see MSF. So this um, Vulnhub box that I'm doing actually took me a few hours to do. It was a lot harder than the last one. It, the last one really didn't involve too much hacking. It was more so just looking around the system and finding the clues. So now that we're here, we're going to use a search and we're going to want to look up Drupal. And so this will just show us all the different um, exploits that they have on here for Drupal. And the one we're going to want to use is actually called Drupageddon. And it uh, reminds me of the movie Armageddon. So that's how I remember it so easily. And so when it comes up, when it pops up here, we'll uh, 
we'll use that and there's really not too much things you need to do to it other than put in the IP address that you want to attack so here it is it ranks excellent which is awesome um, makes it a lot more reliable so we're gonna copy this use paste that in there now we're gonna want to show the options so when it shows you options it tells you if it's required yes or no and so it already has port 80 you don't got to change that and then all we need to do is set the our host which is the remote host so the target address of which we want to do so you don't want to do that by typing set our host and then to the IP address and then to make sure it worked I'm gonna go back and look at the show options and as you can see it filled it in right there so now all I have to do is type in exploit and it should start a reverse TCP handler and then ultimately into a shell so now that you can see it put us into a interpreter and we're in we have a reverse connection um, we can see who we are if I can type um, let's do this drop into a shell who am I so as you can see we're WW data and so once again to make it look cleaner we're gonna put in the simple Python command that spawns a normal looking shell that's just a lot easier to work with bt.spawn There we go. So now it's a much easier shell to work with. And we can see what directory we're in. So once we're in here, we're going to want to go all the way back to the WW data and list it. So when I got to here, I looked around. Um, we can try and cat etc password. We got that. Um, nothing too much we can really do with this at this point. Um, we'll see, we'll look up UMA, and so as you can see, it's running Linux Drippy version 3.130, and so once I noticed that, I tried to look up an exploit for that, and so I did find one, but we'll get there, but before I could do that, I had to find somewhere that we could upload a file, so if you go to ls, l will list the privileges and then as you go through you can see that there is a lot of files that we can't do anything with until you get down to this uh, TMP temporary file and as you can see we have read write and execution privileges on this so this is definitely going to be the folder that we can upload to so we can't upload while we're in a shell Alright, so now that we're in here, we want to see where we are. And we are in var www.html. So we want to go back to the home like this. And now you can see um, under TMP right here, that's the one we want to target. That's the file we want to target, and it's we have all the permissions. So um, <clears throat> we're going to have to find a exploit first that can give us privilege escalation so we're gonna do this and we're going to open up another terminal but before that I'll show you guys the exploits so we want to go to here and we want to go to kernel uh, what was it 1.13 or something like that Three point one three is what it was. And we want to look at exploit database. So once we get to here, we see that there is an exploit made. And it's EDB ID is three seven two nine two. And that's really what we got to look for because 
I'm gonna go back to the terminal. We're gonna use a tool called Searchploit, and hopefully you guys can see. Since I forgot to zoom it in, um, search exploit kernel 13.3. And um, all the kernel exploits are in this path, so we're going to want to enter it and see what they have. So now that we're here, we're going to list the files. And as you can see, there's a Linux one, and we are using a Linux system, so we want to go to the Linux. Jeez. Now list those files, and we want to use a local one, so cd local. And now, going back to the ID we just saw online, 37292, that's going to be the file we want to copy. And it should be a dot C. And so where is it? Three seven three seven three seven two nine two dot C. So what you're gonna want to do is you're just gonna wanna copy that to the file location that you want to. I already have it copied, so we don't need to do that. So now let's open up back to our other window. I'll zoom in here. Sorry about earlier. Alright, so as you can see, we gotta exit out. Now we can upload. So let's make sure we're in the right file. We want to CD TMP. And now we're in, there's no entries, and we want to add one. So we're gonna use the upload command that Metasploit has to offer. And where is mine? I think I just have it under the root so it's easy to get to. Yep, so there it is. So upload 37292.c. And so as you can see, it's successfully uploaded. And then when we get here, um, it's the only file in the system. And we need to change the permissions of it to make an executable. And you cannot do that while you're in the interpreter. You have to go to a shell. And so this will actually be the last shell we'll need. So let's make it look nice again. There we go. There we go. So as you can see, there is the file that is not an executable that we need to make in one. So you're going to do that by using the, uh, since it's uh, written in C, you're going to need to use the GCC. And then we're going to need to specify an output. And then we're going to want to call this exploit. And the file we are making executable is this one. So now let's see what happens. So as you can see, the new file called exploit is in there, it's an, and it's an executable. And so what we're going to want to do is we're just going to need to execute it by typing in exploit, let it do its thing. And now as you can see, we should be in root. Who am I root? So we can also make this look pretty. Import. So as you can see, we're in the root, we completed the CTF. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, give me some video ideas, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.